very good. So welcome back. Uh, now we discussed a little bit how to compute amplitudes and uh, why it is difficult. What, uh, how can we do this? So this last hour we do something slightly different. We discuss structures. Okay. So we don't discuss uh, how to compute an amplitude. To assume that your amplitude is there. So how does it look like? And uh, we discuss, uh, of course, there are plenty of interesting structures. Uh, but one which is extremely important for phenomenology is the infrared structure of scattering amplitude. So why is it important? Well, amplitudes, as you know very well, develop pores in the dimensional regulator parameter epsilon, whatever, develop infrared pores that uh, reminds you, but these things are a reminder that what you're doing is very, very bad. You're integrating over all degrees of freedom, including very, very soft one, with, and you should not be doing that, okay? So the leftover, the price you have to pay is that you get these infrared pores, so the amplitudes are not observable per se, and what you have to do, you have to combine them with something that makes them observable. So the simple thing you can do is uh, in uh, take, for example, a cross section. And what you do, you compute an observable and you have to quantum mechanic tells you that you have to consider all possible final states that lead to the same observable object. So if you have an amplitude for uh, a quark, then you have to add an infinite number of soft gluons attached to it. Or if the quark is massless, infinite number of collinear gluons and you have to sum in a, uh, in a incoherent way, a real emission, get all corrections, and only this will be finite at the very end. Now, uh, this is, uh, in order to do this, uh, you need to understand very well the structure of, uh, of infrared singularities, because you have to match the virtual structures with the one coming from real emission into something which is, which is finite, okay? So because of this, uh, infrared structure is quite interesting, uh, and uh, starting uh, at, uh, three loops uh, in the non-planar sector, it's also quite uh, non-trivial, okay? So in the planar sector, it's entirely trivial. Uh, in the non-planar sector, it becomes quite uh, interesting, okay? So uh, I, will, uh, I will now briefly discuss how to do this. Uh, now, this will take, we'll do it properly, will take a lot of time, so it'll be a little bit sloppy, but again, happy to discuss later on with people who are interested. Uh, uh, so what do we want? We want to understand the, the structure or this infrared structure, okay? So when can uh, you develop poles? You can develop poles only when you have something going on shell inside your loop diagram. So let's consider, for example, uh, a very simple one loop diagram, okay? Some off shell form factor, okay? And then I emit uh, uh, something like that. And let's make it even simpler. Let's make it QED and let's make massive electrons, okay? So that I can remove all collinear singularities, okay? And I get a photon here, okay? If this is k, okay, there is a region in loop momentum when k is small, when this propagator and this propagator go on shell. Okay? And when this happens, in this region, basically you develop uh, singularities. Okay? So this makes your, you can compute this integral and you get uh, an infrared pole. Okay? If this is massless, you have also another region in the loop momentum integration where this goes on shell. Which one is it? Well, when this gets collinear to an external leg, okay, uh, this gives you another singularity. So this can be both soft and collinear. So the maximum you can have with massless external quarks or whatever photons, electrons, is an epsilon squares. So this is soft and collinear. And then you may have that this is collinear but hard. So only this goes on shell and you get a hard collinear. So that's the structure of a simple integral and there's no need to think about it, just compute and you see something like that. The question is what happens uh, in uh, complicated cases, okay? So let's imagine that now we say it's one loop, okay? But we have a more complicated diagram, okay? So what happens? Well, what happens is the same, absolutely identical, okay? Just imagine that this momentum is K, okay? When this is uh, soft, okay? then this propagator goes on shell, this propagator goes on shell, and you develop singularities, okay? But what happens to this propagator? Well, let me call this one, two, three, four. Let's say this k plus one, this k plus one plus two, and this is k minus two. Sorry, uh, one plus four, k minus two, this is ra random numbering, okay? If k is small, so then this goes on shell, this goes on shell, but this basically k decouples from this line. Okay, because you get uh, an S14 in this line. 
So this line, basically k, has no effect. And this diagram, when k is small, becomes something like that. Okay. So this lag here becomes completely in uh, non-dynamical. Okay. And uh, so this will give you exactly the same singularity structure of this object here. Okay. But of course, this is not the only option. Also, this there is a region of momentum where this is uh, is is small, and then you get a singularity structure like that, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this very simple analysis tells you that at one loop, uh, the infrared divergences uh, can be written as a sum of a triangle diagrams. Okay. Um, now, can we be a little bit more precise? Okay, let's see what happens if uh, uh, if this momentum is soft. Okay. Now, just imagine that we have something like that. Okay. Well, if this is a quarter that becomes soft, you know very well that everything is cut off. You don't get any actual singularity. So the only way this can be problematic uh, if it's a gruel. And then we may have a diagram like that. Okay. And the gluon. And if the gluon is soft, uh, okay, you basically have to a part in this diagram where it attaches uh, to uh, a vertex like that. Okay, and then this enters into the diagram. Okay. Where this is, let's say P1. Okay, and this is let's call it k. Okay, let's make it uh, not call it work. Okay, p1 plus k. Okay, so what happens in this vertex? Uh, well, you get uh, u bar one, and then you get uh, k slash, and then you get p1 plus k. Sorry, not k slash, sorry, gamma mu p1 plus k slash. Okay, that enters in your diagram. Okay, divided by uh, this, okay, which is p1 square, which is zero, k square, we assume it's small, so zero, so really to p dot k, okay. Now, can we simplify this somehow? Well, yes, so this one is small respect to p1, so this we can remove, and this we can anti-commute, because when, if, we, if p1 slash acts on this, the Dirac equation gives you zero, okay, and this gives you two p mu. Okay, plus something which is reduced. So this, uh, you see, becomes uh, uh, 2 over 2 simplified, so p mu over p dot k, then u bar, and the rest of the diagram. So you have a complete factorization. So the rest of the diagram was what, what was there before, okay, without the insertion. So you get uh, a nice factor, which is called a conal factor, that multiplies uh, your your diagram without the extra emission. Okay. Now, why is this nice? Well, this is nice uh, because the same identical thing uh, happens uh, if this is uh, emitted of the of a gluon. So, if you do this calculation, okay, do it as an exercise in the in, in the limit where this is small, you get the same identical thing. You get p mu over p dot k, and then uh, this. Now, this is not a surprise. So we're talking about soft radiation, okay? Soft radiation is classical, so cannot distinguish spin. So this is normal. If it, if it didn't happen, we did something stupid, okay? So this is just a statement that whenever you have some hard direction and you attach a soft direction, you can uh, use iconal vertices, okay? And then the only thing that uh, separates uh, this case, but this case is color, okay? Here we have a, a T uh, fundamental matrix, and here we have an adjoint one, okay? Then it becomes very nice to define uh, a, a generic uh, color representation. So instead of remember that this is in the joint, this is a fundamental, whatever, I just say that whenever I have a color insertion, sorry, a, a soft insertion, I substitute by this p dot k times uh, some color matrix, uh, okay? And this may be the fundamental for the fundamental, a joint for a joint, I keep it completely generic, and then this will act on something, and this something will tell me uh, if this is fundamental or joint or not. Okay, so this is a standard uh, 
uh, notation in QCD users all the time because it makes your bookkeeping much, much, much simpler. Okay. With this idea, uh, if you if you see what we said before, basically to find the infrared singularities, uh, the soft singularities, sorry, of uh, generic one loop amplitudes, you just need to compute triangle diagrams with this numerator, and that's it. Okay. So this immediately gives you the soft part of a one loop amplitude. This is a so-called uh, Catani formula. You find that. Uh, at one loop, this can be written as basically one over epsilon squared ti dot tj. So we'll have a rule that attached to line i and line j. Okay, that will come with the color uh, with the color um, color matrix like that. Okay, and then you have a triangle with numerator. Pi dot pj, which basically cancels the numerator of the triangle. So you will get a triangle u square over Sij to the power epsilon summed over a possible i. And everything is massive here. Okay. Plus one over epsilon. So this gives you all the all the poles of the of the soft poles of the one loop uh, of one loop amplitudes. Okay. What happens beyond uh, this, the first pole? Well, there will be, of course, a part that comes from the same triangle. Okay, and then there is something else because you can have hard collinear objects. Okay, so as I said before, now hard collinear objects are localized and cannot depend on uh, uh, multiple color configuration. It depends only on. Uh, so if I have a collinear that goes here, knows only about the color of this leg. So in general, I can write Collinear singularity is the sum over all possible legs of a number over epsilon. The super important part is that this is not a matrix in color space. So this is just depends on the color of a single uh, hard leg. Okay, so at one loop, this is, uh, you can compute it, it's relatively simple. It's 3 over 2 CF for quarks and it's beta 0 for gluons. Okay. So that's the structure of. Uh, Singularity or oh, infrared singularities at one loop. Okay. And uh, how are they cancelled in physical cross sections? Well, as I said, so if now I consider Z decay, I also have a real emission. So I'll have this diagram plus this diagram. Okay. And when I square this integrate over phase space, so when this goes soft, I have a pace of with this interact with this and gives it cancel exactly this. And when this goes collinear to this leg, I get a piece that cancels exactly this. Okay, so this is the structure at one loop. It's very very simple, and uh, the nice thing, so the interesting thing, sorry, is what happens uh, beyond. Okay, now in order to see what happens beyond, uh, uh, of course you can just uh, look at integrals and look at what happens, uh, but there is actually a, a cute way of finding singularities, uh, infrared singularities uh, of. Uh, generic uh, multi-loop amplitudes that makes them uh, to some extent more transparent, uh, which is basically uh, seeing uh, infrared singularities of scattering amplitudes as UV singularities of an effective theory. Okay. And now what I will try to do, I will try to describe this uh, in, a, in, a, in a quick way. Again, I don't have time to go into a lot of details, uh, but uh, uh, I hope that I will at least give you an idea. Now, in order to introduce this, uh, I will do another. I will first discuss something which seems completely different. Okay, I consider my original pro my original uh, triangle diagram. So this is what is called pseudo conform factor. Okay, but so something like that. Okay, the thing that we started with. But instead of computing pole of this, uh, I compute sensitivity on of shellness of external legs. So what I do now, I put here P and here I put L, and I say that P square is small, sorry, it is minus P square is equal P square. So I, I put them uh, in the Euclidean region, okay? Different from zero, minus L square in Euclidean square, different from zero, okay? So instead of, now for now it may be completely unrelated, but as I hope you will see in a, in a second, uh, what I want to do now is compute uh, the 
sensitivity of this object here to the off shellness of the external legs. And uh, as, as I said, so what we will see in a second is that this gives us access uh, to the infrared uh, properties uh, of, the, of the triangle. Okay, so what I want to do, so this is uh, something I tend to Q square. What I want to do is compute this object here when Q square is much, much, much larger than L square or P square. Okay. Now, I have to expand my integral in these things, but integral branch has a complicated structure, so I cannot just do Taylor expansions. Okay. And then, uh, in order to study this, uh, there is a very nice technique in QFT, which is called expansion by region. Okay. So now I'll give you a quick crash course on this object here, which is extremely powerful. It's, uh, it, it, it is useful whenever you have to expand any integral or generically any function which is not here expandable. And this thing is one of the reasons why we really like a dimensional polarization. Okay. Now, uh, to show what this is about, imagine I have to expand something which is uh, similar to a one loop to a loop integral, but I take this function here, okay, zero to infinity, okay, k minus epsilon over k plus m, k plus q, and I want to expand it in the region m much smaller than q, so, okay. So if you will see, this is a prototype or something like that. So basically I have an uh, integral with, okay, with a complicated uh, structure, okay, times propagator-like objects, uh, and I want to expand uh, some external variable being much more than that, okay? So I take this as a prototype to show how these things work, okay? Now, of course, you can integrate this thing here. You just get pi minus pi sine pi epsilon, okay? U to the minus epsilon minus m to the minus epsilon over Q minus M, okay? So that's the exact result, it's three or three you get. And if you expand that small epsilon, which is what we'll do in uh, QCD, right? You get uh, a log of M, okay? So as you mean, you cannot just expand the Taylor expand the integral because we'll never give you a log, okay? So how do we do it? Well, let me show you a curiosity, okay? Now I define two cousins of this integral. I define an integral F large, okay? where I assume that I'm integrating in a region k is much, more, much larger than m, okay? So I take that integral and I integrate between lambda and infinity, where lambda is much, much larger than m, okay? Then if I'm in this region, I can expand uh, in a very nice way the integral, okay? And that's just a geometric series. I just I would have to integrate minus to the power n, okay? Uh, m to the power n, okay? And then k minus n minus epsilon minus one over k plus q, okay? I have to do this integral, okay? Now, so if I do this, uh, this expansion is totally well justified, okay? Now what I do, I say, I don't care. I don't care about the integral anymore. This integral is too difficult for me. I just compute this, okay? So basically I'm integrating uh, over all uh, integration region, I lose connection to the original integral, okay? I just define a new integral that I call F large. So at this point, this becomes not an expansion, but a definition, okay? And uh, very good, you integrate it and you get, uh, you can resum the geometry, the, the series, but I don't even need it. Uh, you get pi Q one plus epsilon, and then you get some, these integrals are all, all trivial. And, over Q to the N, okay? Now I do the same, I define something F small, okay? Which uh, start uh, from that integral integrated uh, between zero and lambda, okay? And I, put, I take lambda much smaller than Q, then I can expand the other one, okay? So this becomes minus, uh, the power n, q n plus one, and then k n minus epsilon, k plus m. And I play the same thing as before. Now I define a new integral. So I forget that uh, this was this was coming by expansion of that object. I just define this by expanding the whole integration region, okay? 
fever integration again over Q M epsilon sine and uh, pi epsilon okay and then I have an infinite sum of m over q to the n. Okay. So I define two completely random functions, okay, that uh, came from original object. Okay. But now what is perhaps surprising uh, if I sum them. I get back my original into. Okay. So I took uh, my my integral did some uh, approximation to it so basically i take so what did i do i take my integral okay and i split into two regions zero lambda plus lambda to infinity okay with lambda like that okay i expanded this expanded this so if i did this it's obvious that this has to work okay but what I did, uh, then I expanded, I extended this to the whole integration region. So I'm double counting like hell, okay? And yet somehow I get the same result, okay? What is happening? Well, what is happening is very cute. So what is my double counting? Well, my double counting, let's say for example, there's a small case, right? So my double counting is F small, Okay, minus, so zero to lambda is, I'm double counting, I have to subtract lambda to infinity. Okay. Of what, uh, what I was integrating, which is minus to the n. Okay. Q1 plus one and then K n minus epsilon. So what I did before, okay. K plus m, okay. But you see, if, here, um, BK. K is large, okay? So I can always expand and neglect this, okay? If I were in dimensional regularization, if I can neglect this, I will get scaleless integral and I get zero all the time. I'm not in dimensional regularization because I have this, okay? So the double counting in the first order, so in the first order, so this K is like one over epsilon Q lambda to the power epsilon, okay? You can do the same thing with f large and you will get minus epsilon q lambda power epsilon and the two cancel, okay? So what happens uh, if when we do this, uh, the double counting uh, always lead uh, to scaleless integral or in this case to integral that cancel out uh, like the standard cancellation of scaleless integral in dimensional organization and I never have to consider it, okay? So that's a cute property of uh, uh, dimensional organization. It's called, uh, it's what, it's a debate of what is called expansion by region. So if you want to expand an integral, then take the integrand, look at all possible regions that give rise to something that's non zero, expand the integrand in all possible regions, and then integrate over the whole space. Okay. Why does it work? Well, it works because. Uh, all the overlapping regions are lead to scaleless integral, except in, in, in this uh, example, okay? Now, to be 100% honest with you, this has not been proved, okay? But uh, in general, but with all examples that uh, we know of, this works. Uh, and of course, when we do your example, you can check uh, that it works, okay? Yes? Uh, can you explain again why the overlapping regions are something like that? So in this case, so F small gives you this, okay? In the first order, then all the other terms. And F large gives you this. You see the cancel, exactly, okay? Now, uh, there is a subtlety, of course. This cancellation is the same cancellation that you, uh, sorry, the question was why the two cancel. So the cancellation is the same identical cancellation that happens in dimensional regularization. When you have here, you see, in order to integrate this, I need epsilon to be positive. And for this, I will need epsilon to be negative, okay? I do the same, the usual trick of dimensional regularization, then analytically continue, put them the same, and send it to zero. It's the same, so this is exactly the same when you have a scaleless integral, you basically integrate between zero and lambda and you get uh, the cutoff upstairs to some power epsilon, lambda to infinity, cut off with the power epsilon with a different sign and you sum the two because you do another continuation. It's the same identical thing, okay? Is it, is it, is, yeah. Does it answer your question? Yeah, okay, so uh, this basically, as I said, is the basis of expansion variation. What we have to do when we have to expand 
an integral in some specific limit, uh, all we have to do is basically find all possible uh, regions that contribute uh, and then expand over the whole uh, space, which at least naively may seem completely wrong, but the beauty of dimensional organization is actually works. Now, if you buy this, we can go back to our pseudo-conform factor, okay? And see what we have to do, okay? Now, uh, as usual, when we want to understand structures, it's useful to go to the light cone. Okay, so I go to light cone variables. And I put P on one P on one light cone. Okay, so uh, M bar M P over two M bar plus M P bar over two N plus the perpendicular. Okay, where N is one zero zero one and M bar is one. The usual light cone variable. Okay, and perpendicular is the one that lives here. Okay. L, I put it on the other light cone, okay? And I want to expand uh, in uh, that limit, okay? Q square, much, much, much larger than L square. And uh, as usual, when you expand something, you have to define a power counting, okay? For reason which is easier, so we don't get square root everywhere, I, this, I call the, the following ratio. So this small object, uh, I said for me, this case, like a small parameter squared, okay? So this is uh, just a definition of uh, lambda. So this is small, and I call them the small number squared just to make uh, counting simpler, okay? Now, if this is on the light cone, then this implies uh, that P has components that go like, uh, on the first light cone lambda squared, second lambda one, and it's also component. So this is plus minus purple, okay? And L, similarly, is one. The next word, lambda, because it has hard component one direction, so one direction is not small, okay? Transverse so direction has to be small, otherwise it will not be on the light cone, and then has to be on shell, so this uh, times this equal to this squared, so the last one has to be squared, okay? So this is uh, the definition of my kinematics, huh? and then uh, we can look uh, at, uh, we can expand uh, using the logic of expansion by region, okay? So we expand our integral, okay? In all possible regions, uh, that gives us uh, something which is non-zero. Okay. And it turns out uh, that now I have to decide how the loop momentum scales. So loop momentum, in general, it scales like uh, lambda to the power a, lambda to power b, and then times of some power c. You can do it as an exercise that uh, if a plus b is different to c, you get zero, you get scaleless integrals. Okay, that's a simple exercise. And then at the end, uh, there are only three regions that contribute here. So the first one is lambda square one lambda. The second is one lambda square lambda, and the third is lambda squared. Lambda square, lambda square. Now, for obvious regions, I will call this regions collinear one because the same scaling of one hard direction, collinear two, and soft because everything is soft. Okay, all the components are small. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you can, uh, I just want to show you that all other scalings actually vanish. Okay. So, for example, just imagine that I have that K scales like. Lambda, 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 okay? Then what happens with k plus l squared? Okay, what is this? This is k squared plus two, k plus l minus plus l minus k plus, plus k purple, purple, okay? Plus l squared, okay? Now from above, l squared is over the lambda squared, okay? K square, pam, 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 is all the lambda squared. So this is squared, this is squared, okay? K plus uh, is all the lambda squared. Sorry, is all the lambda and uh, L minus lambda squared. So, so this lambda cube, I'll remove it, 
Okay. This is order one, and this is order lambda. Okay. This order lambda is order lambda. So in this limit, uh, this, uh, the only time that survives is two L minus K plus. In the same identical way, K plus P squared in the scaling is just two P plus K minus. And then what you have to compute is the integral DDK of one over. Now K square is order lambda square. You cannot expand. There's nothing bigger than there's something else. So K square, you keep it. And all the plus I epsilon, of course, but okay. L minus L minus plus plus two uh, P plus K minus. And that says exercise is a scaleless integral in disguise. Okay. So it doesn't have any scale, this is zero. Okay, so really the only one that remain at the end are one, two, and three. Okay. Now you can compute them. It's a simple exercise. I don't want to do it now, I'll just give you the result. But I hope that the logic is clear. So what you have to do, you just have to expand and integrate. So, sorry, I forgot an important region. An important region, of course, is where nothing is small. Okay, this is called the hard region. If nothing is small, that's fine. Okay, so the loop momentum is large, it's always there. Okay, now what happens if the loop momentum is large? Okay, well, if the loop momentum is large, what I have to integrate? In the hard region, the usual so dk, and in this case, uh, slightly dif different from yesterday, but just because I don't want factors of two, dk is the dk, and then the usual factor is i pi d i pi d over two and uh, mu four minus d. Okay, the usual factors to to make these integrals nice. If I have to expand this, what do I get? Well, k square is larger. Okay. Then I get k plus p1, okay, which is k square plus 2 p1 dot k, okay, plus p1 squared. And then k plus p2, plus l1, sorry, p1 was called p, k plus l, okay, k square plus 2 l dot k plus l squared. But I'm in a hard region where all loop momenta are larger than the external uh, of shellness. So this I can neglect. Okay, and you see immediately in the hard region, so the inter in the hard region is my original amplitude with on shell. Okay, this is the thing I want to find the infrared structure of. Okay, that's my original amplitude. And okay, if I compute it, I get what would I get. Let me write it down if you try to do this in an exercise. So what you get is that I H is. I write it in a slightly idiotic way, but uh, I want to emphasize the structure of the pose because later on it will be important. And minus it at two, nobody cares, plus or epsilon. Okay. So this, of course, comes from the expansion of mu square over q square to the power epsilon, but uh, I just wrote it down explicitly. So that, uh, that's the first one, okay? And that's my original amplitude. What about the other two? Well, let's go collinear. If I do collinear in the collinear region, the first collinear region, what happens is that K plus L squared can be simplified to two K minus L plus, everything else is suppressed, okay? While K plus P squared, there's nothing I can do about it. This is homogeneously of order lambda squared. So the integral I have to compute in this case is k, and then I have one over k square, then I have two k minus l plus k plus pn squared, okay? You compute it as a standard integral and you get gamma one plus epsilon over q square, 
and then you get minus 1 over epsilon, sorry, so square them, minus 1 over epsilon log mu square over big P square, minus 1 half log square mu square over big P square plus Z plus 1 over epsilon. Now what is important apart from the form is that this thing only depends on the relevant variable for this direction, which is the off shellness of the P leg. Okay, that cannot depend on anything else because we really projected out everything else and this is the only thing that, that is left, okay? Now, um, this is fine. Of course, the other Korean direction is something identical with LMP flipped. Uh, so the only one that we miss, and I want to have them all on the same blackboard, is the, um, basically the soft one. Soft one is quite different, okay? So in the soft, k square is k is lambda to the fourth, k is plus l squared is two, k minus l plus plus l squared, and k plus p squared is the same, two k plus l p minus plus p squared, okay? So if you compute this soft, what you get is something slightly different from before, minus gamma one plus epsilon over two L plus P minus, okay? And then you get uh, some pores, can be written like that, okay? And then I don't have space to expand it, so you're gonna find this up, L plus P minus, okay? Divided L square, P square, mu square, See, this uh, introduces a soft scale that knows about the external uh, of shellness, L, pl L plus P minus is Q square, and uh, this object here, okay? Now, if you sum everything up, uh, everything is nice, everything, we can, all the pores cancel out, okay? And you get uh, the, the famous Sudakov result for the form factor. So if you sum, sum everything up, uh, you get Uh, so R plus collinear one plus collinear two plus soft, um, you get the, it's an offshell object, so it's finite. So you get one over Q square and you get the famous double log of Sudakov, uh, Q square over L square, log Q square over P square, okay, plus two zeta two, plus blah, 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 okay. But this I don't care, I couldn't care less. What I care now is that, uh, the collinear and soft regions perfectly matches the pole of my uh, scattering amplitude, okay? And it has to be, because what I did, basically, I took scattering amplitude, made it off-shell, so I made it finite, infrared finite, and then expanded in the small off-shellness in a systematic way, okay? So since my systematic way inside contained the amplitude I wanted, I basically found a funny way, a, fun, a fast way, of, uh, um, of actually extracting the poles, okay? Now, this is very simple exercise, but as you can imagine, can be made systematic uh, using EFTs, okay? Because what I can do now, instead of having a loop integral in the region collinear one, collinear two, collinear two, I can develop uh, an effective theory of QCD with collinear fields, soft fields, uh, and uh, that's it, uh, and then play the same game at the TFT level, and I can do it at any loop, at any order, okay? So what do I have to do? Well, the logic is the following. I consider an effective field theory, okay, which in QCD is called soft collinear effective theory, okay, where I integrate our heavy modes, okay, and I only keep stuff which is soft and collinear, okay? So if I have a field, in this case, right, I write it as a collinear part, collinear two part and the soft part, okay? If I have an N particle object, I will have N collinear fields and one soft field, okay? And uh, it will, uh, it will, uh, I, I will construct an EFT starting from this object exactly like, uh, like you normally do with EFTs, you get, I mean, that was a very nice introduction to it, so I don't need to do it now. Uh, 
And all you have to do is develop a power counting and write down the, the most uh, generic thing that you can do uh, relative to the power counting, okay? Now, uh, I don't have a lot of time, so let me skip something, okay? So I will give you just a, a hint of how to do this. Not in QCD, which is complicated, but in uh, uh, scalar theory, okay? Just imagine that now I have L is equal to normal scalar theory, okay? Phi squared minus G phi to the cube over T in case of time lapse. And then again, I do exactly this thing, okay? And then I get basically three copies of QCD. I get a soft, a collinear one, a collinear two, and then I have something interesting, I get soft collinear interactions, okay? So these are objects that have a mixture of soft and collinear fields. Huh? So for example, I will get structure like that where I have a minus g over two and I get a two collinear and one soft, okay? So this will give me a diagram which have collinear direction attached to a soft. I may have something like that, collinear, sorry, collinear one, collinear two soft, okay? But that's pretty much what I can have because just imagine I would like a term like collinear soft soft, okay? This cannot happen because I'm not conserving momentum. I will have a vertex where I have a hard collinear direction, cannot go anywhere, okay, because it's just soft. So the soft collinear site is very simple, and then that's it. Basically, I have an EFT, it's written down, I have my Lagrange, and I can do everything, and I can match it to the hard theory, which I know is QCD, okay? Uh, how do I find power counting? Well, I find power counting, as usual, just by looking at two-point functions, for example. I mean, there are plenty of ways of doing it. Let me just spin a little bit forward. So let's take the two-point function of a collinear field, okay? What is it? Well, this is just the for P, E minus I, P, X, and then my fantastic propagator, okay? Now, in the collinear case, uh, the component uh, of um, this, sorry, of P were well, one uh, lambda square one lambda square lambda lambda okay so it's lambda to the four okay this is one okay and this was one over lambda squared so a collinear field is suppressed by all the lambda so at leading power i have the least number of collinear fields possible okay and uh, same we can play the same identical thing we saw so this basically gives you the power count which is the rule of constructing uh, everything there is only one small detail that I want to tell you right now for collinear fields, which in principle, you do not have only fields when you do an EFT, you have also derivatives, okay? And normally, I mean, not normally, it depends on your EFT, but you, in, in many cases, uh, your derivatives are suppressed, okay? Here you have to be slightly careful, okay? Uh, because they actually may not. So let me try to go there, okay? So let's take a collinear field and let's consider the derivative of a collinear field, okay? Now, a collinear field in the Lagrangian, okay, you can always think about, uh, you have a, a term in the Lagrangian which is like that, okay? That comes from Fourier space, right? Of P tilde collinear of P, okay, E to the I P X. And you know I collinear field, uh, the collinear momentum scales. Okay, so if a collinear momentum scales like uh, lambda squared one and then lambda, then you want uh, in position space uh, the opposite scaling. So you want one, one over lambda squared, one over lambda. Okay, so this tells you the derivative uh, of, uh, of a collinear object uh, scales uh, like this uh, opposite. Okay, and in particular, you find uh, that. Uh, the m bar derivative, okay, picks up this, uh, scale like one. It's not suppressed in your power counting, okay? 
So uh, other derivatives are suppressed uh, as usual, but this one is not. So what happens is when you construct uh, operators uh, starting from collinear fields, uh, you cannot just get one. So basically this operator, this operator, uh, second, this operator, they all count the same. You can consider all of them, okay? So the generic operator in the collinear sector is of the form uh, phi c plus something derivative and bar phi c plus. Uh, now you can resum it, of course, so because all derivatives. Uh, so you can write that generic phi c, you send it into sum over t to the i, okay, when well, this is arbitrary, i, and then this derivative, okay, to the power i, phi c of x, which is equal to phi c of t, uh, plus, sorry, x plus t. Okay. So basically, uh, in SCAT, collinear operators are non-local. It's a fact of life, you have to deal with it, it's not a problem, but just, uh, it, it's a fact of life, okay? And then, uh, yes, thanks, I have very little time, so I will just, uh, roughly speaking, sketch you what happens. Now, if I want to uplift uh, our Sudakov problem to the full EFT framework, uh, so what I do, I want to describe a in the EFT a process uh, that, that has n hard legs, uh, in that case, two hard legs. Okay, of course, there's also the z in that case, but it's not color, I don't care, okay? So n hard color directions. Uh, so I will represent it with an operator which has at least uh, n collinear fields, one for each object, okay? So the standard thing to map into a scattering amplitude uh, will be an operator which has uh, and collinear fields, okay? Each with uh, its own uh, object, okay? Now, at least I can add more, but as we said before, these objects are, uh, these fields are suppressed. So if I can construct operators with extra hard fields or soft fields, they're power suppressed. So they don't contribute to the most important part of the power part, okay? So I have this collinear direction and the only thing that soft stuff can do can basically interact with collinear directions, okay? And then I have this, uh, this nice operator and uh, what do I do with it? So this is this thing, right? Uh, in general, when to, to, to describe my process, I have uh, that uh, my effective description of that object will be an operator times some with, with so coefficient, okay? So, so my operator is this, so, so this is my actually my actual final thing, sorry, the, the, the operator is this, okay, so that's my operator. And then I will have in general a Wilson coefficient, okay? Now the operators in real life in QCD depends on all possible kind of color indices and all possible kind of, uh, of um, uh, Lorentz indices and this as well, okay? So I can write this in a schematic way as some kind of Uh, scalar product, okay, of my whistle coefficient with some operator, okay? This scalar product means contract all Lorentz indices, contract all color indices, it's just I don't want to write all the indices explicitly, okay? And that's my operator, and in general, these are operators that, that get renormalized, okay? So these operators uh, will depend on a scale when it's renormalization, okay? But on the other hand, if I now consider observable, so I take the, an expectation value of this on whatever state I like, this will be uh, mu independent. That's an observable, okay? And as usual, this gives me an, an RGE with a coefficient function, okay? That's a usual trick, okay? So this gives me an RGE with a coefficient function with well, some coefficient. And fine, this describes my, my process. How do I find who is who? Well, to find who is who, I just map into a QCD amplitude, okay? What does it mean to map to a QCD amplitude? Well, uh, what you do, I take this thing and I sandwich it with states which are on shelf, okay? 
So I take this object, uh, which are of shell. Now, that's the beauty of it. Uh, these are collinear fields, uh, okay? And if you look at those integral there, so any loop corrections basically will look like uh, something like that, okay? So if I put them on a shell, they're all massless, so they're scaleless, okay? So everything that comes right in the correction inside here, when I match it to QCD, gives rise to leading order, so just three operators, uh, times uh, corrections, which only involve scaleless integral, so they're all zero, okay? So when I match to a QCD scattering amplitude, here I get three level quark and gluon fields times coefficient function. So coefficient function is the amplitude. What is amplitude? So, uh, amplitude without uh, the three level color and whatever. Okay. So basically, the C uh, is uh, C times uh, uh, some kind of tree structure is my amplitude. Okay, so why is this important? Why is this useful, sorry? It is useful because I now have an RG to this, okay? So the RG tells me that uh, these things evolve, okay? And the evolution is governed by the ultraviolet behavior of these operators, okay? So it's actually like before, I have a cancellation between collinear soft modes, uh, so, and I get that all the divergences uh, of uh, a scattering amplitude at any loop order are captured by an RG equation that gives me the UV dependence of, uh, uh, of, uh, the, of my uh, scatter operators, okay? So basically, we get that the logarithmic derivative of a scattering amplitude is, let's say one over z, if I call z the normalization for the operators, m, okay, sorry, oh, I almost finished, okay. And this object here contains uh, all uh, the soft and collinear uh, singularities of my, of my scattering amplitude, okay. So uh, this gives me a very nice way of uh, uh, basically solving this equation, finding the, like you do with normalization is identical. So there's a normal dimension, you find the Z factor, and the Z factor times your bare quantity is free, or is free of singularities. So this factor contains uh, all the singularities. Okay, it's exactly like happens with normalization identical. Okay. And then the interesting question is what is the form of the normal dimension? So this part, if you understand this, uh, this matching formalism, then this is not even discussed, just like normalizations, nothing non-trivial going on. What is non-trivial going on is the factor of this object here, okay? Now, at one loop, uh, we found the pulse of the scattering amplitude, okay? At one loop, uh, we found that this is uh, some TITJ, okay, log mu square or SI, minus Sij plus some of these collinear almost dimensions over epsilon. Okay, so that's the, that's the almost dimension, you put it in, it generates all the epsilon order. Now, you may have found this a little bit puzzling. Yes? Sorry, you forget that there are functions on the left? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, I'm very, being extremely sloppy, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, okay, <laughs> thank you. So I'm just being very, very fast and sloppy. You have to put, you fill the details as an exercise, okay? <laughs> so um, you may find this a little bit, uh, a little bit um, uh, surprising because if this comes from soft and collinear fields, uh, now soft fields uh, should only depend, uh, where is it now? Don't tell me I canceled it. Yeah, it can't say, which is great. So uh, collinear fields can only depend on mu square over p squared, and soft fields, uh, the soft contribution depends on log minus sij over p square l square mu square. This is what we found, okay? And uh, there you don't see the soft and collinear bit, okay? But then you can use a trick. So 
you see that this object here is what you is a nice thing, right? So basically this log of minus sij over mu square minus log of p square over mu square minus the same thing. Okay. So in principle, that thing can can come from soft collinear objects. Uh, only this is color independent. Uh, so this only depends on the casimir of your of your object. Uh, while this object here is colored, so it's weird. But now let's take, for example, this thing and make it into a soft log, and the leftover will be something of the form ti dot tj, and then log of mu square over pi squared. Okay. Now this doesn't depend on j anymore. So you can sum this, this is a sum of i different from j, okay? So, and you know that uh, in QCD we have a color singlet, so sum over ti is a, is a total color of your process is zero, okay? So when you sum this object here, this becomes all uh, j apart from i, this becomes minus ti. So this becomes minus ti squared, which is a Casimir, okay? Sin i. And this actually goes into here. So the structure is there. Okay. And because of this delicate cancellation for a long time, people thought that this is the only structure you can have at any loop order. So what you have to compute, you just have to compute the coefficient here that I completely forgot to write. So that we cast from dimension at any loop order and the collinear almost dimension at any loop order, and you're done. Of course, uh, there is a huge hole in this argument, okay, which it is not true that that two structures are the only thing that uh, that can create the correct uh, the correct uh, the correct structure, because if I have beta ij, I define the one that I like. Okay, so minus sij over minus p i squared minus pj squared, I can construct the correct things uh, without, uh, so basically I can remove this without any need for uh, explicit collinear direction just using a uh, combination that gives me cross ratios, right? So if I just do this, b i j plus b k l minus b i k minus b, uh, sorry, I didn't don't read my, you, you do your nice conformal cross ratios, right? This becomes minus Sij minus SKL minus SIK minus SJL, okay? So this is compatible with all the symmetry of your problem, okay? That basically comes from the fact that your soft current is like that, so it's rescaling invariant, okay? This is a nice conformal cross ratio that you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, uh, assume these objects are not there. So in principle here, if we want to be precise, we have to add a correction tends to come from stuff like that. Uh, at this point, I'm running extremely late, so I don't have time to show you why, but uh, these things can only enter starting from three loops, okay? Cannot enter before, just because you cannot construct it. And it can only be non-planar, okay? And actually it turns to be, to be there, okay? So people computed it, and this structure here, so you get, uh, very simple structure to overloop, but higher loop in the non planar sectors, this becomes uh, quite interesting. The structure becomes very interesting. And this may have repercussion for the cancellation of uh, real and virtual corrections. And uh, right now we know this is an extremely simple function. It's universal, the same in any theory. Uh, and now the goal is to try and to understand the for loop ones because there are a lot of conjectures that uh, imply that it's more simple than what one could even imagine, but we don't know because we don't have it yet. Uh, sorry to running a little bit late, so I will uh, close it here. I wanted to show you a little bit of the concept of these things for cancellation of singularities in, in uh, physical quantities, but okay, so that thing makes life a little bit more interesting, and uh, that's it. So thank you very much. Right, let's see if we have any questions. Oh, yeah. Um, when you're expanding in soft and collinear uh, fields, in this case, you need to be careful about double counting, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, have to be, I mean, these are, I mean, I, I'm not pretending that I construct this catalog random for you, right? right? So, so, so you, you... when you wrote down all these uh, integrals, you cannot just add them up and get them. Oh, no, no, no. In this case, yes. No, in this case, it's perfect. 
So collinear that doesn't count a little bit of soft as well. well yeah, but it's the same thing. So the the, the so the the overlap uh, it is there, but it's scaleless integral. Uh, okay, even the overlapping integral. of collinear and soft. So In this case, yes. In okay. general, you have to be careful. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I think I just missed it because it went by a bit quick. But when you resum the collinear field, was it a t parameter? Well, I just couldn't read. It's the... just some. I have to just something that counts. You see, I, I have to take one plus coefficient derivative plus coefficient. So that's a, the t. I use t to the n as basically the generating functional. Okay, just sorry. generating functional. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I was very fast. Okay, excellent. So let's uh, wrap it up here. Let's thank, thank you once again.